Hello, my name is Michael Miller. I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me to speak today. My talk is about building minds with patterns. I'd like to begin by talking about different schools of thought on cognitive architectures and then move on to the idea of design patterns for cognitive systems. And finally, touch on my project, the Piagetian Modeler. I'll be using the term mind, cognitive system, cognitive architecture, artificial general intelligence, and AGI interchangeably. We know that most existing cognitive systems are not AGIs, but we are aspiring to that goal. In his 2009 paper, Towards a Cognitive Hourglass, Paul Rosenblum makes the distinction between uniformity first and diversity first architectures. Uniform, uniformity first architectures architectures favor simplicity and elegance. Diversity first architectures favor modularity, synergy, and coherence. The SOAR architecture is an example of uniformity first design. The ACTAR architecture is an example of diversity first design. This division exists today. It pervades the approaches people take to cognitive architectures. For example, Jan LeCun recently stated that General intelligence should arise from an architecture comprised of a minimal number of elements. The ideal from the uniformity first camp is to find a single algorithm for intelligence. In contrast, Jeff Kloon in a paper published this year wrote, it is clear that animal brains, including our own, are not large, homogeneous, fully connected neural networks. Instead, their architectures consist of many heterogeneous modules wired together in a particular way with the entire design carefully sculpted by evolution. He also said that it's daunting to consider creating such complex architectures by hand. This is true, it is daunting, but Nelson Mandela once said, it is impossible until it's done. So we take a diversity first approach to manually crafting a cognitive architecture. To do this, we follow traditional software development methodologies. We specify requirements, we survey existing systems to look for useful design patterns. But what's different is that we also have to look at cognitive theories and find a useful theory. We identify data structures to serve as memory units, and we create a rapid prototyping platform. This puts us in a position to compare approaches to cognitive architecture. Along this path, our development has been slow due to minimal resources, but we believe that with adequate support, we could progress much faster. The first step is to decide what a generally intelligent cognitive system looks like. We'd want a system that is device agnostic, that observes its environment, that reasons and infers, that has reflex reactions, that can deliberate, that can create goals, that can do mental simulation or daydreaming, that can regulate itself by correcting or reinforcing its behaviors, that is resilient and can make progress in the face of failure, that can cope with repeated failure, that can explore its world, and that can test its own hypotheses. We surveyed a number of existing cognitive systems looking for these requirements and analyzed how they were constructed. We found a number of recurring design patterns, and we put these patterns into the Piagetian Modeler. These patterns fell into four basic groups, observation patterns, exchange information with a device and create observables in memory, coordination patterns add inferences to memory, reflection patterns modify the behavior of the system, and consolidation patterns compact the memory. Listed are design patterns we found within each of these groupings. The mind-body pattern achieves device agnosticism by creating a discrete interface between the device and the perceiving and executing agents of the mind. The device sends to the perceiver sensations from external sensors, called exterocepts, and sensations from internal monitors, called interocepts, along with actuation results, called proprioceps. The executor sends actuation requests to the device. The deliberation pattern selects actions that achieve objectives given the current situation. Solvers propose possible actions when none are relevant or applicable in the current context. 
The coping pattern updates beliefs and manages objectives using an attention module that reprioritizes, perseverates, postpones, or cancels uh, objectives based on the appraised evaluation of the objectives. Most people think of artificial general intelligence as an epiphenomenon or as a result. People think a system achieves general intelligence when we perform psychological assessments which confirm its abilities. These, this perspective views an AGI as a product or as a result. But Jean Piaget took a different view. Piaget believed people have a common architecture, but they just have different experiences. The mechanism is largely the same, but the data is different from person to person. This led him to say that the mechanism is the intelligence. It's the architecture and what you put into the architecture that drives the produced or resultant intelligence. Mentality, therefore, is not an unexplainable phenomenon. It can be explained by an underlying set of mechanisms that bring about intelligent behavior. Mechanisms like reasoning, recall, problem solving, generalization, specialization, abstraction, concretion, induction, deduction, analogy, explanation, speculation, semi-factuation, counterfactuation, backcasting, hindcasting, experimentation, and so on. I would put it, the underlying mechanisms are the intelligence. The Piagetian modeler combines cognitive system design patterns a neurosymbolic knowledge graph representation called neural propositions, and Piagetian developmental theory to form a cognitive architecture. The premise programming language provides a high level platform for coding the elements of the design patterns as agents in a stigmergic environment. The decomposition view shows that the memory is uniform. It is not divided into long and short-term areas or fast and slow areas. This follows the organization of the brain more closely. The memory consists of heterogeneous elements in a stigmergic database. Facebook is an example of a stigmergic platform where human agents create or delete posts and modify those posts with comments or likes. In a similar fashion, the agents of the modeler in each category delete or modify memory elements. They, I'm sorry, they create, delete, or modify memory elements. Specific agents create, modify, view, or delete specific memory elements. This is what it looks like when all the design patterns are overlaid in a data flow diagram. The book Building Minds with Pattern talks about Piaget's theory from a systems analysis perspective. It shows the architecture of the surveyed cognitive systems. It explains the design patterns and presents the neural propositions. The premise language books discuss the platform for building the modeler. The Building Minds with Patterns book is at an architectural level. It treats each component of a design pattern as a black box, specifying at a high level what the component does, what input it requires, and what output it produces or modifies. But it doesn't go any further than that. I have a forthcoming book entitled Coding Artificial Minds, which drills down on this on the design pattern components and provides source code. The table of contents has sections for the mechanism that describe the synergistic architecture, the premise language platform, and the agent framework for the mind. The second section of the book describes the memory used in the architecture. The third section looks at observation patterns. The fourth section looks at coordination patterns, including activation, belief propagation, simple and complex association, ontology formation, also known as chunking, reflex reaction, deliberation, problem solving, and reasoning. 
The fifth section looks at reflection patterns, including motivation, daydreaming, behavior regulation, goal compensation, emotional coping, exploration, hypothesis, hypothesis formation and testing, imitation and play. Section six looks at various aspects of consolidation, including forgetting, automaticity, and pattern compression. So, for example, if you recall the mind-body pattern we spoke about earlier, we can drill down into a specific implementation where an executor agent sends an attempt message to an app residing on the device. This app is called the Psyche app. And the Psyche app sends attempt results, sensory data sets, and homeostatic urges to the perceiver agent. And here is the code for the executor agent. The executor looks for all pending unexpired attempts and finds a psyche in its registry capable of performing the attempt's actuation. Once found, it sends a message to the psyche's URL. The perceiver agent initializes itself by creating listeners on various ports, giving them specific message handlers. In coding artificial minds, we also drill down on the hybrid neurosymbolic data structure used by the architecture, the neural proposition. A neural proposition can be thought of as both a neuron and as a logical proposition. Viewed as a neuron, it has dendrites which hold the terms of the symbolic relationship. The body of the neuron is connected to a glia cell. The axon of the neuron is bifurcated and leads to synapses which create a dualist reification of the neuron using a thesis synapse to represent the neuron and an antithesis synapse to represent the logical opposite. Piaget views negation as reversibility, so it's not quite P and not P as it is in logic. It's slightly different. Each synapse has numeric belief parameters and various dimensions of activation for a given real or hypothetical viewpoint. This facilitates real world and what if reasoning. The glia place each neuron into a dynamic Euclidean space so that activation can occur in a variety of ways. Observations trigger bottom-up activation. Desires trigger top-down activation. Recollection can cascade activation radially, as George Lakoff suggested. And, and so forth. The neural matrix expands and contracts as neural propositions are added or removed. The mental model formed within the neural matrix is a hierarchy of various neural propositions. From stimuli and percepts on the lowest levels to features and entities and events and situations and episodes in the middle tiers to concepts and hypotheses and other entities at higher levels. Each neural proposition type is a container that holds the experience of the cognitive system and collectively all the relationships that it forms. The book Building Minds with Patterns also touches on several cognitive theories but settles on Piaget's theory of child development for a number of reasons. Piaget's theory was structuralist and constructivist. Structuralist means that he proposed that cognitive structures existed in the mind. For example, reflex skills such as buckle groping, grasping, glancing, and so forth existed. Piaget's theory was constructivist because he believed that the mind uh, continually synthesized new structures from the existing ones from birth until death. Piaget believed that concepts such as space, time, causality, objects, and displacement were formed by this continual synthesis, and further that the notion of the self and the concept of others arose in the individual, in the, within the individual over time. Piaget saw repetition of behavior as the key to development. He called them circular reactions or loops. He saw that loops first occurred spontaneously 
then deliberately, and then eventually experimentally. He also saw that behavior was improved through corrective or reinforcing alterations, which he called regulations, and that anomalies were handled in various ways through processes he called uh, compensation. Moreover, he saw that the individual's world was built through interactions with the world in a twofold process of play, which assimilated elements of the outside world into the mind of the individual, and imitation, which accommodated or conformed the individual to the nuances of the world. The imitation and play of the individual becomes increasingly complex as the individual progresses through sensory motor, egocentric, and operational phases of life. Piaget even had a specific plan for how this change occurred, which he called equilibration. Essentially, equilibration is the process by which the mind adjusts itself to the world. Equilibrium being the point where no more adjustments or internal modifications need to be made. These points are all discussed in detail in the book Building Minds with Patterns. The books on the premise language discuss the platform upon which the Piagetian modeler is built. So the mechanism is the intelligence. To me, that means you need to specify exactly what you want your AGI to do, then build it. General intelligence is not magic, it's engineering. Thank you.